Hey everybody, welcome back to Gunsmith. Our factory is operating at wonderful profit. Look at all these machines. They're so busy. All hammering down in synchronous in syn all they're all synchronized. That's because every time you boot the game, all the machines kind of start, I think, all at the same time. I think. Like that's how their timings work. Let me double check this. Because I, I just shut the game off earlier. And I staggered these. And yeah, they're all coming out at the same time now. So I think these dispensers, you do want to kind of stagger them to where they don't slam into each other as best you can anyway. But this is a little different. I have a, made a couple adjustments. I've added this extra merger machine, which can help us make more backpacks because we've been uh, pretty short on backpacks and stuff. I'm also about to hit a million dollars. So why don't we just do that now? Available orders. Bam, bam. There's a million. But we just keep hitting it. Uh, and now we're starting to get orders that are like 34,000 each. Our only, our daily cost is 10 grand, 10.6. We're operating at just under our power limit. Very nice. Just under our water limit. And a little bit, we have a little bit of a spare uh, to go on, uh, on the gas. I've been wondering about like, if you're really interested in like saving money, you can find a way to like, give up three gas and then we'd be able to get rid of one of these uh utility machines which are costing us another 24 dollars a day and five power but like i don't really care we're profitable enough as is now some of you guys might be wondering hey this is gunsmith and you don't really have a whole lot of space uh how are you gonna make guns charlie how is this factory going to produce weapons for the war effort on both sides? <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, I, am, I'm, I regret to tell you there's some bad news. For everyone who wanted me to make guns in this factory, we won't be doing that. Nope. No guns in this factory. Nope. And that's because guns just take too much damn space. But there's good news. Pistol production license. We can totally get that now. We have 292 uh, trustworthiness. So let's research that. And there is good news. We're not going to make guns in this factory. But. But. We are going to open up another factory. And we're going to do so in Russia. Yeah. Now, when you say open new factory, it starts out with this question mark. And you might be thinking, oh, it won't let me make a new factory. Well, that's because you have to actually tell it what kind of factory you want to open. And so you can choose to have a basic factory, which is what we have here. Only cost 100 grand, but there's no bonuses. There's no uh, discounts and things. And then you have a specialty factories, fabrics, chemicals and firearms. And if you choose some of these things, you get discounts for various elements. So for example, everything that's fabrics, boots, backpacks, you know, all that stuff, right? If you open a fabrics factory, you get a bonus for that. If you want to open a chemicals factory, you get a bonus towards chemical production. You can make a ton of chemicals if you want to. If you want to open up a firearms factory, which is what we want to do, then you get discounts for bullets, and firearms, right? So this is for us to produce bullets and firearms. Now we're already producing a lot of bullets, but we can move them. Uh, we're not going to, because we can make a lot of uh, a lot of firearms in this factory, but we could move our bullet production other places, right? And open new factory is just here. So I'm gonna hit this button here. It's gonna cost me 125 grand, but now we are in this factory. And we have a whole new place in the brick walls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I have not researched this yet. It's being worked on. So there's three days left in that research. There's not a whole lot I can do in this factory at the moment. But we have one. So let's go ahead and just come on back to our U.S. factory. And we can also open another one in the U.S. as well. I can change factory, for example, and go fabrics. And then just open up a new fabrics factory if I want to. And then shift all the fabrics that are here 
into the specialty, specialty factory, and that will give me a 25% reduction in maintenance, a 25% reduction in the prices of machines, and also a 25% discount on utilities. So it's, it's all optimized for this specific thing. What I wish they would do, because currently right now, there's really no penalty at all for uh, opening up, like tr trying to do firearms in a fabrics factory, for example. There's no penalty for that. What would be kind of interesting is if the factory is optimized somehow for this, that they would have some sort of a penalty for op for like putting anything else inside that factory. Because otherwise, this is so worth it. An extra $25,000, that's, that's like less than one order that I have to fill right now. That's the additional price to specialize and get a lot of extra uh, bonuses. I don't think it's necessary per se to, to do that, but I think it'd be an interesting touch to say that a factory optimized for specific types of products also has a penalty for other products. Thank you for telling me I have a driver update. <laughs> Stupid thing. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fill some of these orders. We're making tons of bullets now. Let's accept all orders, as long as they don't have boots. What I'd like to do is get that fabrics factory going too, so that we can start mass producing boots and stuff too. Because right now, I can't accept orders, even if they're really nice. I can't accept orders if they, if they want boots. Because it's the one thing I'm not producing. And I could possibly just move my bullets operation to a firearms factory somewhere, you know? And then I have enough room to mass produce all sorts of things but right now i'm just sort of accepting orders i've also started to sort it by the completion rate as opposed to fulfillment time this one tells me you know how much time i have left to fulfill an order but since i'm filling them fast enough now there's always a ton of time and so i want to see how close i am to actually fulfilling an order so by going completion rate in descending order i can see the one that's closest to being filled first and so basically all the orders i can fill are just always at the top of the list which i don't know maybe that's not the best way to do it but that's the way i've i've liked doing it so far also we have 2500 rp so there is zero reason to research anymore i left that research way too long because i'm pretty much done with the tech tree now we can get our explosives license after we have this but getting our pistol production license is going to unlock the sa mark one the uh, SA Mark II, I believe, is is next after that. I think there's an ST9 pistol. Yeah, the MM, uh, MMG SMG. And then finally, the rifle Mark I. This is for the SA Mark II. We're going to start by producing Mark I rifle, or sorry, Mark I pistols. And then we're going to try to scale. And this is very complicated. You're going to see there's a ton of stuff that goes in just to make one type of gun. Uh, but the orders for guns are very, very high value. So it kind of offsets. Once you get the machinery in place, you start making lots of money for this. Uh, and of course, I know this because of my playing around with uh, in, the, in the sandbox, of course. That's the only reason I know that kind of stuff. So let's pop this order. Uh, accept new orders if we can. I, again, I'm just going to accept every order that doesn't have boots. Although, I think I just accepted an order for uh, rifles, didn't I? Order value? Yeah, it's probably at the top. Yeah, so look at this. They, they want 120 combat backpacks. That's nothing. They want 100 9mm bullets. Again, that's nothing. But they also want 100 rifles, and they're going to give me $350,000 for this order. Right? That is a huge amount of money compared to all the other orders we've ever had. Like this one here is 640 trousers, 460 backpacks, and just 40 uh, bullet boxes for 762 bullets. And that's giving me 50 grand, right? This is like half a thousand backpacks, more than half a thousand trousers, and it's only 50,000. This one is like peanuts compared to that. But because the rifles are part of the order, it's a ton of money. So we're going to be looking at getting a ton of money uh, moving forward here. And it's going to be really nice. We're up to 923, 923 grand again. And uh, I'd like to start optimizing my factory for, for firearms over here. But until I get that research done, I can't do it. So I'm going to let this run just a little bit. And uh, when we get that... We get that research done. 
it should be any second now. Like, I feel like it's, yeah, one day left. When we get that research done, then we can uh, look at optimizing this factory. So I'll be right back. All right. Department of Firearms, license and permit. Pistol production license. In accordance with the regulations and provisions issued and maintained by the Department of Firearms, your application uh, detailed in this document is approved. Below, you will find the extensive list of what this license permit has granted. We wish you the best of luck in your new venture. All sorts of things have been open to us now. Uh, I've been uh, just making up our staff room and stuff, waiting for that license to be done. And I've also gone ahead and added a bunch of these big shelves to this little corner because I looked up the other factory and it's like we don't really use this corner very well and uh, I think this corner here provides a little bit of good space for uh, some shelving and it also allows, allows me to get a little extra space over here next to this door so okay so now we are ready to go for making guns we have at our disposal now the metal former the metal anodizer we have the hammer forge the milling machine, and the gun merger. And those are all the things we can do. Uh, we also have all the bullets and stuff still. And uh, yeah, I've added one extra bit for uh, power. And I've also shifted and moved the utilities over to this side of the room, which is pretty good. We're going to need somebody to make sure this stuff stays repaired so I don't have to do it myself. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get one of these guys. And also provide him with a little bit of a tool bench. I think we'll probably just pop that there. So this guy can go to work, get his tool on, and uh, just keep that stuff in in maintaining this stuff for us, buddy. Will you do this? Just kind of hang out over here for a bit, okay? Uh, we'll save that. Okay, good. Now, let's talk about the process for making guns. It is a it's quite complicated compared to anything else we've made. SA Mark One. Okay. Let's zoom out a bit because we have to. This is all the stuff that goes into making the SA Mark I. Okay. We have aluminum blocks and steel blocks. They need to be made into metal bars, which then get made into gun components. Gun components get all the way down and sent to the anodizer. We also have steel blocks and aluminum blocks that need to be made into metal bars. And then we have to take the milling machines and make uh, magazines and the uh, the slide for the top of the gun. That stuff, along with a new, sh a new set of steel blocks and aluminum blocks, which are each going to be formed into a, the body shape, but also hammered to the cylinder, then formed into the SA body and the barrel, and all of those four sets of things get run through heat level two, and cooling level two. And then all of that stuff has to go through the anodizer before it then gets merged. Every single one of those components get merged into a merged Mark I. And it's at that point where putting it in a recycle bin and getting it to this part is actually possible because if you take all of these things, now, you, okay, let me, let me scratch that real quick. You can take all of these things and put them into recycle bins because there's no processing done to them other than getting them in this shape. But remember, if you put them through the heat and cooling, you can't put it in a recycle bin until it's been formed into something else. And that actually includes the anodizer too. And the anodizer is pretty expensive, 45 power and $27 maintenance. And the only reason it's that low is because we're getting a bonus for it on this factory, right? That is the only reason it doesn't cost sixty dollars uh, a month to have this thing. Uh, we're gonna bypass. We're not gonna do the SMG. We're gonna make sure we do that order, that order, that order. See, while we while we do this stuff, we also have to be keeping on top of our uh, our orders and stuff too. So let's just take all of the available orders we can here, and we'll just come back here and to the active orders tab and just sell as many as we can on an ongoing basis, right? Okay, good. Now, how do we want to do this? Well, we want to work backwards like we usually do. And I'm going to make sure we do it right in the middle of the floor. And that way, once we're done with the sequence, we can just move it into the position we want it to be in, right? So the first thing I think I want to do here, let's get research going 
on the Mark II, so we can maybe incorporate that if we want to. The Mark II is very similar to the workflow for the Mark I, but there's some extra steps there that further complicate things. And uh, you can double dip your supply of certain components, and I think I want to try doing that. As soon as we have this set up, we might start breaking it down and making it more efficient. So that's my workflow. Make it work, and then tweak it to make it more efficient. Uh... I was kind of hoping we could sell that order yet, but we can't. Okay, we're still over a million dollars. So let's take the cookbook, go to SA Mark 1, and let's work backwards. First thing we want, of course, is the boxing machine. I'm just going to put that over here, and we're going to stick it over here with an end of the line, because this is also a way for us to prove that the guns are actually being boxed, and they actually work, like the entire process works. So let's just set this over here for now. And I think we are going to start at this end of the factory. Um, because it, it, I just like the idea of them coming through the front door. And all the machines are close. And we'll expand that way as we go, right? Just like we did last time. So, cookbook. First thing we want is... I actually think we can skip the gun boxer for now. And we can go... Is it better to go backwards in this? I don't think it is because of how complicated it is. It might be good to go forwards with this. Let's... We'll come over here for a second, because these gun components... We can mass produce these very, very fast, and all of the guns will take gun components. So I think this is going to be a slightly separate line. So let's take the steel blocks and aluminum blocks. We're going to kick these out. And I'm actually thinking probably we turn them this way, and uh, maybe we stagger them slightly. And then we'll take a metal former... Now, this machine is really interesting because the arrow doesn't really tell you the whole story. The arrow tells you the direction that they're coming into. It doesn't tell you the exit direction. So you have to kind of know where it's coming in from. So, for example, in here, the arrow is pointing that way. That's where it's going to come in at. And it comes in through this little side door right here. But it's going to go through this part and then kick out the side on this side. Right? So it's not a straight line. Uh, so for that reason, I think I'm actually going to turn it be about like this. And then I think I'm going to go... We can actually just butt this right up against it. On this side. We'll grab a belt and go like this. These are small enough... Well, they're just metal sheets and stuff. So we can, we'll can we stagger it a little bit. Okay, so these... Steel block and aluminum blocks are going to go out this door, and they're going to get put into here. And this metal former, we want to make into metal bars. So we're going to output metal bars, okay? Now, we could have an operation where we just have tons of metal bars being made all the time. Because everything that goes with these parts are going to take metal bars. But we're going to try to have the whole system kind of connected together because I like the way that looks. If we can pull that off, I'd like to do that. Um, let's go ahead and sell the orders we can. Very good. Accept new orders as long as we can fulfill them. There we go. Order value. Just make sure there's no guns. Okay. So we can sell that one now. Good. Okay. So in this, the next part of this process looks like that it's going to take two milling machines, one to do uh, mags and one to do uh, the slides. Now these milling machines, I think I like the idea of having four of them. So to go about like this with it. And there's a reason I'm spreading it out like that, you'll see. And I actually think I need to move it a little bit further. Wait, now is this the is this the process we really need to make? No, 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 no. This isn't the right one because we're we just need to make gun components for now. Yeah, 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 yeah. This milling machine, the one milling machine we want is gonna make gun components. So let me just take now. If you're wondering, yes, I do have a template for this. I've already been working on in the sandbox, so I already kind of know where I want things positioned. But I'm doing it from scratch just to kind of show you guys what it is, and then um, once we have that done, I'll try and make the changes and stuff. Uh, to it, and I'll just tweak it a little bit from my example that I have. Uh, if I don't match it perfectly, then, you know, whatever, but 
We'll go uh, to the milling machine. Not the metal former. The milling machine. Here it goes. And I think because of how... I, I could just butt this right up against it. We don't really need to see it. Um, no, like, we could. Like, I like watching them, but we're going to have plenty of things moving around over here to keep our uh, our need for that satisfied, if you will. So this is, like, a really simple way of making lots of gun components. And I think probably what will happen here, this takes six seconds on the craft for metal bars, and then one second to output gun components. So there's a lot, it's a long craft speed here. This requires four seconds on the, on the craft and two seconds for the output. So you can see this is a seven second process and this is a six second process. The craft on this is six seconds. These here are two second outputs. So if we want to make a ton of gun components, we would most likely want to have two of these and split this. So probably what we want to do just to be, you know, more efficient with that is we most likely want to start using these two-way splitters. We could split this two ways like this. And then we're going to need another one of these metal formers and another one of the milling machines, right? And then the process then becomes how to get these two things next to each other. Because we're going to make a lot of guns. And I think all the guns are going to need gun components. So we're going to want to make a bunch of them. We're probably going to overproduce initially because I don't know how to make it efficient. I just know how to make it work. So we're going to intake from this direction, I think is what it was. Yeah. Probably something like that then. Put this here. There's the MK research. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get research on the ST9 pistol. And I want to get another recycle bin there. Okay. So with these two, let's go ahead and just move them over here. What we can do with these two is we'll have the small belt go there and go there. I'm actually thinking to make this even more like space efficient, we could... Why is that not letting me... Hello. Thank you. We could actually move this over like this. Because that would make it even more space efficient, I think. Uh, and then we take this little area here and we just go... Uh, you want to go out from there? I don't think so. We just go like this, right? Yeah. Which means to be even more efficient, we just go like this. There you go. Stick that there, stick that there, and stick that there. Okay. So that will produce a bunch of gun components for us. I believe. Form it into bars and then make gun components. Cool. Let's get a desk set up for that. Uh, we need a station for managing this. Where is staff management, line control, add a station. And we'll just add this guy over here. He'll be my... Uh, yeah. Let's go to here. Hi. Staff recruit. Go one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven machines. Sounds good. And uh, we have the power for that. So let's flip the switch and see how it works. Now, here's the other problem I'm going to run into here, though. Yeah, we're actually going to run into a problem here. Uh, and that problem is that... If, these, if this thing is splitting two ways, we have two different types of materials going in. Which means splitting this up, only one machine is going to get only one and one's going to get only the other. So, I don't know if this is the most effective. Certainly not the most efficient. But what I'm thinking here is, if we can take 
let's say these two and these two. If we have the front two be aluminum and the back two be steel, then I believe, I think anyway, they get even distribution. Because the first two will be aluminum and they'll get split 1-1. One, one. Then the second two that come out will be steel. They'll get split 1-1. One, one. And then it'll just keep that pattern. Each two aluminum in the front will get split. Each two steel in the back will get split. As long as these two aluminum don't come out before we have uh, two steel pass by it, right? So let's give that a test. We're going to go to the market. And we have the aluminum blocks and steel blocks, right? So I'm just going to buy... Let's say I buy uh, 200 of each. We'll start with the aluminum blocks, and then we'll follow it up by buying the steel blocks, and we'll see how that goes. So we should see... Just try this. Close it down. I want to see how the distribution works. And then reopen it at the same time. That's what I'm hoping for. It's a it's one of those barely happening things, but it is happening. You see how the two aluminums end up behind the steel? So if they turn on at the exact same time, that's what will happen. And that's what we need. So now the question is, are they getting distributed evenly? I think there's dark colored ones and lighter colored ones, right? The aluminum is slightly lighter colored than the than the steel. So we should see dark one, dark one, light one, light one, dark one, dark one, light one, light one. And we are. Good. That means that they're getting fairly even distribution of, of materials. I mean, we started with aluminum blocks a little bit last time. So both machines should have a little bit more aluminum blocks. But the goal being that we are now accumulating gun components. And very quickly, too. So that's good. All right. We'll let that run. And let's talk about the extra parts of the gun. So cookbook, go back here. The extra parts starts the complexity. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of complexity. And uh, we might have some cuts in this video as I set it up. But uh, there's additional complexity in this that I find really cool. And I can't wait to get to rifles. I haven't touched rifles yet. I've only touched I've only touched setting up the Mark I pistol. So uh, even the Mark II, I've seen the recipe for it. Right? It looks very similar. Uh, but it has one critical difference that's going to throw a wrench into it. And that's that it has this extra this extra tree right here that needs to go into it, which has a different uh, sort of uh, process for the body. And it also introduces a silencer, which, honestly, you guys are, uh, I assume, gun enthusiasts when you make this game. Can you please change this to suppressor? Because it's not a silencer. Thank you. I'm not a gun person, and I know that. Uh, but there's an additional body. For, there's an additional part for the body, and uh, it goes through one heating process, then becomes a Mark II body, which then goes into the same process as everything else. So that'll be interesting to try to figure out. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we're running out of aluminum blocks. That's because I don't have a marketer guy. Let's get a marketer guy. First, I want to fill the orders I can. Look at all of those orders being filled. <laughs> uh, available orders. Accept, 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 accept. I'll just... I think I'll just decline the orders later. Oh, wait. It wouldn't let me accept that order. That was weird. Just accept all available orders. And fill all available orders except that one. Uh, okay. Now we're up to back up, back up to a million after buying all these things. Cool. So, this process. I've got these set up. There's, this is intentional. You'll see. We're going to go with uh, buying 200 more supply for this. And then I think I'm going to take a break on the production. So, I, I'm not going to... Like, I'm going to have a bunch of gun components ahead of where we need it. So, we'll take a break on that once it uses all those materials. So, we, go, we don't get too far ahead on gun components. So, what I want to do here is start up... This little process here. And we need a metal former. Which is going to feed into these these milling machines. So each metal former is going to feed into these. 
I think. Yes. One. Sorry, it goes like this. One. Two. I'm trying to go off memory here. Uh, and then we'll have these two. And I think... How did I have this working before? Oh, dear. I think I had four. There was two for each of these. And then they all got split through. So I think it went something very similar to what we have set up here. Yeah, I think I just copied this almost. So let's have a second dispenser here, here. We're going to go like this, move this back. We're going to take a splitter in the center here. Very similar to what we have set up over, over there already. And we'll offset this a little bit so that it doesn't clash. Uh, and then from here, we're going to go... I think we're going to slam this like I'm going to have to read I'm most likely going to redo this because I've already in my head I've already figured out kind of how I want this organized from the blueprint and then uh, I think because this goes in from this side I think I went like this I think I ended up doing this. Yes, I went like this. Okay. I'm remembering. Remembering is happening. Go like this and like this. You are then going to get put up right here. Like that. And you're like that. So let's slide both of these machines over a little bit. Like that. Okay, so these two are... No, you need to be spaced out like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you're there. And you are... There. We have to scoot you a little bit. And then you need to scoot over. Because you need to scoot this way. A tad bit. Like that. Then we go like uh, this with you and like this. Copy you over, uh, no, copy you over like so. Now you need to go one more like that, yep. And then it uh, goes like that, okay. So this is my little Double aluminum, double aluminum, and then steel, and then steel, okay? We don't have any more supplies, so we're not having anything work over here. Maybe we'll buy, let's just buy 200 more. And I need them also to be off and then back on. So that it goes the right way. Okay, that should take care of it. And, yep, good. Okay. So with these two, we're going to have the belts come out this side. Like this. And I know this belt is in just a little bit. Don't worry. It's to make it flush with this machine like this. And then we go with two-way splitters here and here. Okay. Okay. Now, these two machines, all of these machines actually need to scoot over. They're going to end up being about like this. Okay. And what we'll do here is we'll have this belt go over like, uh, I think it was like this, actually. This one goes over like that. We have one there and one there. One there and one there. This goes like this and then over like that. And it puts the split materials that we're creating from these two and it puts it into these machines. Now I wanted to have 
Do I want to have three ways here? Or is two ways enough? Mm, I think the two way was what we wanted because of the timings. I'm trying to remember. Let's see. Cookbook. We're going to go. Yeah, because these are just making slides and mags. And if I did three ways on them, I guess I could have one be slides, one be mags. One set of three. But I'm not sure we output fast enough for that to be necessary. I think that was the thing. We don't output fast enough for three to three of these to be necessary. Um, so what I could do is... Yeah, so one's the slide and one's the mag. So let's have you be slide. And you be slide. And then you'll be mag. And you'll be mag. Okay. You're making metal bars. And you're making metal bars. And that is the process for... The slide and the mag. Okay? Now we also need... Another set of machines that is going to make the body shape. And the body. And then also the metal cylinder. And the barrel. So what I want to do is we'll take and copy this, this little arrangement here. Uh, but before before we do that, though, I need to test something. We're going to take the belts. We're going to go that way, like this. And then like that. Okay? We're then going to take the platforms. And now you'll see why I needed to separate these. And we're going to bring the ladders down in here. And this is so that those middle machines can get can get uh, repaired, right? We need to open them up to be... We need the workmen to be able to get in there. And so now they can access the side. That was the reason for that. So this template, I want to save this locally. And we're just going to go like this. Make sure all of this stuff is selected. Looks good. And we're going to save this to down here. We're going to call this, um, I don't know, initial gun for now. Because it, it enables us to let these machines sit again. So let's go ahead and, and lay that in again. Initial gun here. And it's going to be about here. Looks like it's the right space. But instead of this extra former, and this is going to change our shape of things. Instead of this extra former being there, get out of my way. We want, because this is all the metal formers, instead of this extra one, we want a hammer forge. So the hammer forge looks like this. And you notice how we're losing money rapidly. It's just because I'm not filling orders. The other factory is still producing product this entire time. And it's producing product based on the monthly report that we the last monthly report we had so expenses and all that stuff let's get all of this accepted for orders hopefully we can fill some of them go to new orders and just fill as many as we can and i like completion rate it's really nice because they're always at the top the order that you're most closest to filling will always be at the top now we're back to 900 grand Okay, so uh, the hammer forge has things that go in this side and they come out the other side. So it's a direct, comes in direct and out direct. So I'm going to take and demolish that forger, that former. And we're going to put this right up against here. And then we're going to have the... Actually, it might be better... Can we just have it be like this? I wonder if this will work. Because it helps me on my, my spacing. I wonder. If I go like this. Will you actually end up in there? I bet you won't. I bet you have to be scooted back a tad like this. But if that was the case. Then we might be able to get better for spacing. Just by going like this. And then it comes out this side. 
which isn't as great for spacing. So I have to move all of this, but that might be okay. Or we can slide this down a bit and go like this. You can't fit there. But if I put you out a little bit, we can go like this with you and then over and wrap around. I don't know if that's the best course of action here, but like belt wise, I bet that's not very efficient, efficient, right? But the way it's built, if I don't want to move the way these are sorted, then this is how I would have to do it, which is kind of okay. I'm, I'm, I'm content with this and we can still repair all of it. It's all accessibly, accessibly repairable. So output, we want metal cylinders here. Uh, we want metal bars here. This is, this is the metal bars. We're gonna wanna have these machines making the, the body. No, metal formers are not making metal bars. They're making the body shape. Yes, this makes body shape. And that means this one is gonna end up making the SA body. And this one makes the SA body. Okay. So these machines are all set up now. Aluminum and steel comes out, goes to the former. They're also gonna go to the metal cylinders, which is gonna be produced here. This gets kicked out and is gonna make the barrel. So this makes a barrel and this makes a barrel. And then all of this stuff needs to go through the anodizer. So instead of being this way, now I remember, instead of being like this, we want to have all these belts go together like this. They all get shifted this way. Now there's reason I'm doing this instead of the, um, instead of the recycle bins, and you'll see why in a second. I, I haven't mathed this out, but I believe I'm right on this. I don't know that, so we'll, we're gonna see. But I believe I'm right on this. And sometimes you just have to believe, okay? Uh, you know, I hate that that's, this is the way it is, uh, but it, it is the way it is. So I'm gonna have to move some of these belts. Let me move, let's say this stage of belts. We'll just move these belts here over a little bit. It's gonna have to be about like that. And then this one can then go in the middle like this. Okay. So that gives us the entire production for the body and all that stuff we need for guns, right? Pretty good. Pretty good. We're gonna be low on power in a second. And I guess it's because, well, we just don't have enough power. I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and increase that over here like that. Also, let's fill some orders. Bam, 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 bam. Look at all these orders filling. We're still at 900 grand, despite, uh, look at this, $881,000 for these rifles. I can't wait to get to those. It's gonna be great. I do wanna do this in stages. So even though the rifles are the most profitable by far, you still want to produce the other weapons because the orders come in for all sorts of stuff, right? And if you're just limiting yourself to just mass producing rifles, then you're gonna have very few orders and a lot of extra supply, right? So you wanna diversify. Uh, okay, I think this video is long enough. Thank you for watching, I appreciate you. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe if you haven't already. And when we come back, we will continue the setup for guns because this is actually, this is actually complicated. And I, I could just pop in my templates and be like, look, we have guns, but I want to take you through the process of setting up the machines and stuff. So come on back for the next one. We'll see you guys. Bye-bye.